Epic Narratives Leads and beginnings for narratives. So you watched the other video, but now you're saying to yourself, yeah, but how do I do it? Well, you already know your character. My character's Adam. He's 11 years old. He's in sixth grade. Brown hair. He likes Harry Potter. Some things he doesn't like. Uh, where is it? Well, it's in his old house. It's a two-story house in Minnesota, present time. Uh, so we've got this information. And we know what happens. We know at the beginning, number two there, it says Adam can't find his pencil. He looks in his sister's room, he looks in his backpack, then he finds one. And so, kind of boring. So what, what, how do we do this? How do we write a lead to get somebody interested in this story? Well, we're going to look at how other authors write their leads. So, for example, you, you read in uh, Owl Moon. You read a setting lead. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. Right? So I might take that, and I might weave it in a different direction into my story. Late in the afternoon, when I got off the school bus, I walked straight home. The sun threw long shadows of trees and houses across the sidewalk as I neared home. My bedroom on the second floor would soon have a light shining from the window as I began my homework at my new desk. It used to be Grandma's desk. Well, you know where the, this character is. Uh, he's going to do some homework, probably in school. It gives us an idea of the setting. Well, look at a different author. Check out how Tuesday of the Other June began. We have some dialogue. Be good, be good, be good, be good, my Junie, my mother sang as she combed my hair. We have enough troubles, so keep your sweet self out of fighting. Yeah, having somebody say, don't do something at the beginning... Pretty sure it's going to happen. My story might start something like that. I'm going. You don't have to yell at me. I hate homework. Adam yelled back as he stomped up the stairs, fists raised in the air, backpack bouncing on his shoulders. So we know Adam's at home. He's going upstairs to do homework, and he's not too happy about it. So we kind of took that one, and we made it our own. For our own, for my setting, for what Adam might say. Uh, another example. In, the, in Blackmail, we have a character conflict action lead, right? Like most of his friends at school, Angel had an older mean brother who pushed him around and played dirty tricks on him. One time his brother, and it goes on. Well, if I take that one, and I can make my lead similar to it. So my story might say, none of Adam's friends had a, at school had a little sister. He did. Adam's little sister got into everything and had no sense of private property. Once, she had even taken all of his t-shirts for an art project. This time, he knew where to look when all of his pencils were missing from his desk. So you know where he is, you know he's got a sister, and you know something's missing. Gives us an idea what the conflict is, right? So we have these different types of leads. You are going to try two, maybe a setting or a character one dialogue or conflict one, an action one. When it's time to choose, you can mix and match, right? So you're going to have all of this information on week two, day one. So take one of your favorite books, one of your favorite stories, or one of the stories here. Try to redo it. See how the author wrote the lead. How would you write your lead, right? Check to see if you're done with your realistic fiction lead, and that's how you do it.